Okay, we're about three after. Um, so we'll go ahead uh, to be respectful of folks' time and get started into the meeting. Um, before I jump into the deck, uh, Philip, do you want to say hi and kick us off? Philip, you're still on mute, at least on my end. Can you try your mute button? Oh, wow. The, the, the continual mistake. Hi, I'm Philip Hoogie, superintendent here at Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve. And um, welcome everybody to this um, discussion of our backcountry and wilderness management plan. And I'll, I'll be here to answer questions too at the end. Great. Uh, and I'm Rachel Collins. I'm the project manager from the plan. I'm also facilitating this meeting um, and sharing some information about the plans you'll be hearing a bunch from me. And also I'll be helping to answer any questions folks have um, kind of on process type things um, related to this planning effort. So diving in to the presentation, what we have for uh, our roughly 90 minutes together tonight um, is to go over the current uh, draft of the backcountry plan as well um, as the associated environmental assessment um, and supporting documentation. Um, and the purpose of this plan is really to be thinking about how are we providing access to the backcountry area? Areas, what does wilderness management look like? How do we protect, preserve, restore, and enhance all of the unique characteristics that make up the Glacier Bay wilderness um, and associated backcountry areas of the park? So for this meeting, um, we are going to be doing a brief presentation on the backcountry and wilderness management plan, sometimes referred to because uh, it's shorter as the BWMP. Uh, we're going to have the next chunk of time is for Q&A. So if folks have questions for us about what's um, in the plan, what to look for as you're reviewing, um, or questions about content as you've already dived in, how to provide comments, those kinds of things. We'll pause um, and have a time for Q&A on the plan. And then for the last chunk of the meeting, we'll be taking um, public comment or public testimony uh, as a part of um, uh, the hearings on this plan. So we'll be doing that towards the last section. Um, I'll kind of let folks know when we're transitioning. Um, as we go through. Uh, just some instructions for folks who might not be as uh, attuned to the team's environment um, for this meeting. We, um, you have a couple key controls up towards the top. Um, right now, those are disabled um, just to help reduce kind of any background noise um, that might be going on, especially if this meeting were to get uh, large. Um, we'll enable those when we get to the Q&A, again, just to kind of help um, reduce background noise and kind of those kinds of things. Um, we'll also be using the raised hands features as we go through to kind of queue, peaks up, queue people up for Q&A, as well as for public testimony towards the back end. So uh, you'll want to know where those are. Also down here in the bottom corner, um, if you need captions for this meeting, you can go ahead and hit that ellipse under more, under languages and speech, and then there's an option for live captions over there. If that is a service that is helpful for you, um, you can go ahead and turn the captions on there. So with that, I'm going to jump into uh, the BWMP overview and what is in this document that we have out for review right now. So in putting together the backcountry and wilderness management plan, our intended outcomes were really to be thinking about what the management guidance is going forward for the backcountry areas of the park. The park has a general management plan from 1984, which really provides the baseline for helping us understand and what we're managing for in the backcountry, in addition to some other parts of the portfolio I'm going to share with you here in just a few minutes. But we also wanted to look at what are the contemporary best practices that we could be pulling into the management and also thinking about what new adaptive tools we might be needing now or setting up future managers for so that they can continue to preserve the exceptional backcountry resources and wilderness visitor experiences that this park has to um, provide to the American public and our visitors from around the world. So when we say park backcountry, what do we mean? Where is this plan um, talking about and thinking about and planning for? Um, we're talking about the 2.6 or roughly 2.6 million acres of both terrestrial and marine designated wilderness that the NPS manages. Um, and this is partially to meet the requirements of the 1964 Wilderness Act um, and its other implementing guidance like ANILCA uh, and other related laws and policies. So this is a big um, area of the park. This is a big park in our system as well as a 
big area of the park that we're thinking about. Um, we also have a portfolio for management. I think that this is an important component for us to be thinking about. Uh, within the National Park Service, we use a portfolio concept for managing our parks and for providing that management guidance, that policy guidance for each unit. Uh, all of that is based in both the enabling legislation of not only the Park Service, but the individual units. Um, and we really use that as a jumping off point to develop what we call foundation documents and that outlines the purpose, significance, and the exemplary resources and values for that specific unit. From there, we also have general management plans that talk about the general management of the park. Uh, and then we get more specific as we go through the portfolio for specific types of resources or areas of parks that really drill down on how do we implement that broader guidance? What does that mean tangibly for those specific locations? So some recent examples that y'all have seen and participated in are the front country plan that really outlines that general manage that guidance and the implementation that we pursue for front country areas. Uh, then we also have this backcountry plan, as well as the marine management plan, and all of those are companions that really help us drill down from that GMP to think about what does it mean on the ground, what do we tangibly implement from those. Um, then there's some other components of the portfolio that go along with these documents that kind of make up the full suite um, of management for the park. So that's things like the LSEC plan um, that has its own um, prescriptions for how we manage uh, that area of the park. There's cultural landscape inventories and structure reports. There's also some resource stewardship guidance, um, as well as natural resource conditions and other contracts and agreements that we use to manage the park. So just wanted to give folks a little bit of an orientation to where this plan sits in the portfolio and how it kind of plays into the broader management guidance that the park has when it comes to managing backcountry. Additionally, wanted to share um, some background before we get into the details of what's in the current version of the plan. How did we get here? Uh, we have been out for civic engagement on this process a couple different times. Uh, we started in um, late 2019, but really dove in deep starting in early 2020 and came out for public comment to dig in on issues and values and really wanted to bring folks along with us in the conversation as we were thinking about what are some of the goals we should be considering for backcountry and wilderness management? What are some objectives that might inform our planning process? Really give an opportunity for folks to be in on the ground floor um, with us and defining the future of this and thinking about what it means to go forward. Then we also came out again in later in 2020 to be thinking about strategies and actions. What kinds of ideas um, or implementable items would people want us to consider as we put this plan together um, and folded all of that in? And then last summer, we came out with the draft plan um, for the backcountry management and wilderness areas. Uh, and y'all provided comments on that draft plan uh, that got us to this point. And what we heard during that process was really thoughtful feedback from across the country. So grateful for the people who took the time to put a letter together and send it to us. Um, letters that come into us, um, one of us that's on the call reads those. Um, if not many of us um, end up reading those letters, sitting with them, digesting them, um, and carrying them forward. So just wanted to always pause there and let folks know if you're curious where that letter goes, it comes to a person at the Park Service, likely someone you're seeing on the screen, um, who is actually reading that letter, analyzing it, and carrying it forward. Um, but some of the other things that we heard was um, hearing from our tribal partners, uh, that for them, this is homeland uh, and a place that is both physically and spiritually sustains them past, present and future generations. We've really worked um, on making sure that we're carrying those ideas, concepts and stories through in this. There were many people who said that they seek out this place for profound wilderness experiences as one of the most pristine and restorative places on the planet. Um, it can be a place of adventure, a place of remoteness, a place of challenge. Uh, and those are all valued parts of the experience, as well as kind of getting away from crowds and really getting into the land. Um, people are seeking ranges of experiences, so deep backcountry experiences and access to the associated environments. Um, and people are also saying that they really appreciate the current management of the backcountry and that there's a lot of things that were going really well uh, that's happening in the Glacier Bay backcountry. And they wanted to see those things be carried forward. Um, the other thing we heard a bunch of about was really thinking about how we might be flexible, adaptable, um, and sustainable in the face of future changes that might be coming um, down the pike. And so how, how might we build a robust plan 
that not only helps manage the current conditions that we have today, but is robust to future conditions as well. So we've really tried to put so together a plan that not only helps us manage in summer 2023 and in 24, um, but in the decades to come and really sets the managers up uh, both for now and the future with a good toolbox to help them manage going forward. So what's in this planning document that we've been talking about? Um, there, It starts off with a vision for backcountry management, uh, and that is there on the screen, but I'll read it because I just we spent a lot of time on it. Um, and the vision is for the backcountry of Glacier Bay National Park is an intact dynamic wilderness now and forever where people immerse in, investigate, connect with, and steward an ecologically and culturally significant landscape. So that's what we're centered around and what we're really trying to advance with all of the work that is included in the backcountry and wilderness management plan. One of the key components of this plan um, and a key component of the portfolio as well is taking the time to recognize that this um, planning effort as well as this plan is honoring a rich cultural tapestry of indigenous use and occupation in the backcountry areas. Uh, this is a place where we really wanted to be able to tell um, those ideas and be able to highlight that component um, of the backcountry in the wilderness as homeland to our tribal partners. And so you're going to see in the plan some components related to that about how we start to think about revisiting past management approaches for historic structures and revisit some of those ideas with kind of these new concepts um, of how they might relate to the Clinket clans as well as to any other ethnographic resources. We're trying to really think about how we manage visitor use in a way that is respectful and sensitive to those places of particular significance, um, like cave and karst formations uh, and other points within the park. Uh, we also really wanted to think about how we can continue to connect people to that story and to those ideas um, of the backcountry as homeland uh, and uh, recognizing traditional territory in appropriate ways, um, given the mix and the tapestry that we have in this landscape. So I'd encourage folks, there's some great content in there to really be thinking about um, the backcountry and the wilderness areas through those lenses. Um, and just really am grateful for the tribe's collaboration on those pieces with us. Overall, uh, the backcountry plan has four major components. Um, one that covers kind of the overview in the background. Uh, two that dives into the general management direction. What are we managing for and why is that important to us? Uh, three deal, uh, drills down into more detail on strategies. What are the tangible actions that we are taking either now or in the future that could help us maintain goals and achieve objectives of the plan and really fulfill that, that vision in a meaningful way? And then chapter four um, gives an overview of what does wilderness character monitoring look like? Um, how do we take those wilderness values for which the area was designated as wilderness uh, and really protect them into the future and keep track of that over time? So some things I wanted to highlight um, from both the plan and the EA that are kind of um, notable points for us is one, the park-wide management zone. So in the uh, draft plan, there were two proposals um, for how we zone the front country areas or the front country access areas. That's the purple that's on your screen right now. Um, we have streamlined that down to one proposed zoning scheme based on public feedback and some additional investigations. But these zone descriptions really outline the desired conditions, um, and those are the ideas, concepts that we're managing for in each of those different areas of the backcountry. There are some similarities between the zones, but there are also some differences about what we're managing for in those areas. Uh, and so you'll see there are remote wilderness zones. That's the green. There's a shoreline access zone, uh, and that is the yellow. The wilderness waters zone, that's the marine wilderness, is in dark blue. Uh, then we also have the glacial access zone uh, around the tidewater glaciers, and that is in the kind of burgundy color, and then that front country access zone, uh, which is in the purple. And so if you go on to the story map that we have, there's some more detailed maps for these. There's also more detailed maps in the plan to dig in a little bit deeper on um, what we're doing as far as being more specific um, in specific locations for what we're managing for and what the management goals are for those components of the wilderness and the backcountry. Uh, another thing that's pretty notable that we've put more detail on and carried forward into the environmental assessment is this idea or construct of what it would look like to provide a hiking opportunity on Excursion Ridge. So the opportunity was presented um, in front of us and we discussed a little bit in public comment was to provide a hiking opportunity that doesn't require marine access 
Um, and so the ability to be able to access the alpine environments and some of those different parts of the wilderness um, on foot only. Um, so the proposal is to go from the hydropower road up to Excursion Ridge, if that's feasible. Um, that's kind of the idea that we're analyzing and looking at currently. There are some next steps um, that we still have work to do on this as far as cultural resource surveys, uh, working with the city and the state, as well as APT on public access and parking and some of the details about exact locations. Um, as well as trail alignments and site design. So we spend most of our time talking about how in this plan, the idea of this trail as a concept um, and as an expanded recreational opportunity to access the wilderness, knowing that there will need to be some follow on work done on that in the future. Some other uh, notable actions that we just wanted to call out for folks because they are new in the EA or have additional detail that wasn't presented in the previous version of the plan are communications upgrades um, that would be going into potential wilderness areas. This is connected to the marine management plan. The idea is to co-locate as many of these communications towers as is um, feasible. Uh, and so we would try to co-locate. This analyzes the opportunity, what would happen if we could not co-locate them and needed to put new installations into wilderness. Um, what would the impact of those installations be on the wilderness and associated resources? We also analyze uh, changes to registration or um, requiring permits uh, and also group sizes. Some of this has been in existence for a while and we're just expanding the season on it um, or clarifying in a planning document something that has already been in pilot. Uh, and also there are some discussions about commercial mountaineering um, and clarifying uh, where we are on the management guidance for Mount Fairweather when it comes to commercial guiding of Mount Fairweather. Um, and really getting that into a place where um, it's more clear, uh, both to the public and as well as to future managers on um, what is uh, allowable as far as commercial mountaineering on Mount Fairweather. So that's some other notable actions that show up in the plan. Um, the other, the fourth chapter is the wilderness character monitoring chapter. So again, uh, we've been working on this concurrently throughout the planning effort. And so in the early part of the plan, we identified the measures to track wilderness character. How will we know uh, when we have been achieving our wilderness character or wilderness uh, protection objectives, or how will we know when we've departed from them? We've been working on also developing the monitoring framework. Who's going to monitor them? How do we do that? What does that look like? Uh, and also finishing up the baseline assessment for wilderness character, which is a component of um, our management obligations that are keeping it wild to be tracking wilderness character on that. So there's a high level discussion in the plan about what that looks like um, that's included. The uh, other thing of note, I just wanted to share a little bit for schedule on folks. Um, we uh, were out last July with the draft plan for review. And again, thanks for the comments. Uh, we have a much stronger plan as a result of that um, time spent. Uh, we've been working since that time on developing the draft plan in the EA. And so now we are out uh, between now and March 17th for public review um, on that plan and EA. And we'll be using the rest of March and the early part of April to develop the final plan, put together any decision documentation, and getting the final done in time for summer. Just a couple more from me. Um, for folks who aren't familiar, um, we are in an active comment period, uh, so please um, submit electronically comments that you might have on the plan. Um, and there are the two URLs up there on the screen. We can post them into the chat as well. Um, but you can go to the Glacier Bay's um, Pepsi site, uh, which is part NPS, uh, park planning at NPS.gov, um, and look for the open to open for comment button um, to get there. And if there are um, other ways to get involved, you're welcome to check out those other websites. Again, if folks need those links, we're happy to post them into the chat. Um, they're also um, posted on the website. Um, and they've been floating around a couple other places as well, but you're always welcome to say you need them again and we can post them in the chat. So um, that is the end of my presentation and an overview of the plan. So we will transition over into the Q&A. So give me just a second and I will turn on all of our features, allow cameras, allow mic. Um, for folks, okay, 
Um, so if you have a question um, for myself or Philip or um, someone else who might have a good answer for it, um, you're welcome to type that into the chat um, or go ahead and use the raise hands feature um, to let us know you have a question. And then we kind of work our way. It sets up a queue for me in the raise hand so I can work my way through the hands and bounce back and forth between the hands and the chats before we move on to the next section of the meeting. Rachel, I have a question first. You know, how, how can I guarantee that kind of day here at the, um, you know, when my experience? That I, I you come in May okay. or June, because my recollection is like July first. There's like the hose in the sky that starts dripping, and it stays that way through. That would be great, though. Or a day like this. This is in the park, I think. Oh, thanks, Andrew. Appreciate that. Thanks, Melanie. Okay, I'll give it just another minute to think if anyone else has something to percolate on. Appreciate the thoughts. This is I appreciate that this is a a big um, and a really complicated place to think about all of the different dynamics when it comes to um, that. Yes, we are recording both the presentation as well as the Q and A, um, and we're gonna try we're gonna get it cleaned up and get the transcription cleaned up and make sure it's all 508 compliant, and then we'll get it posted. We're targeting for early next week to have the recording up and posted. So on that um, previous slide that I had up, um, we'll have a link to it posted on um, this Pepsi page um, would be a good place to find it. And there might be other places to find it as well, like on the parks homepage. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely get the recording up so folks can watch it back. And people who didn't weren't able to attend can also find the recording there as well. <laughs> 